Measles, mumps, and whooping cough may seem like old-fashioned illnesses, but the reality is more and more teens are being exposed to them, especially in schools and college campuses. And these illnesses are spreading quickly because many kids aren't immunized against them. So this morning, we're taking a look at childhood vaccinations and whether or not they're right for your child. I'm joined by the chair of UConn School of Medicine, Dr. Paul Skolnick. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, your expertise is in infectious diseases, so you have seen a lot of the measles, mumps, Correct. So through the years, these diseases have become less prevalent with vaccination, which is very important. But uh, in past times, they were more prevalent and caused much illness, serious illness. Now, over the past five or six years, there has been sort of this shift by parents not to get their children vaccinated. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, in some of the popular press, lay press, there have really been inaccuracies that have been promulgated by certain groups about some side effects of the vaccines. Specifically, there is the MMR controversy, the measles, mumps, rubella vaccination, which is a, right. you know, a triple vaccination, right. so to speak. One of our most important vaccines, measles can cause devastating illness, brain infections, and lead to death, even later illness in terms of adults with uh, brain injuries and effects. This vaccine works extremely well, and it's very safe. We're seeing more and more cases of this, especially in travels, re travelers returning from other countries, and it really poses a great risk. The vaccine works wonderfully well to prevent this devastating illness. Now, the MMR vaccine, the controversy behind it is that there was a thought that the vaccination causes autism. Right. And that was based on a study done several years ago. but. That has actually been debunked, so to speak. Right. So, unfortunately, this controversy, as you implied, existed, and people thought and promulgated the idea that this vaccine caused autism. We know very well that that's not the case. There was an Institute of Medicine report that went through all the data, and as you say, the initial report was actually discredited. The article was retracted from the journal, and the physician who wrote that article, Did the study. lost his license to practice in England, and it was found that he was actually paid by lawyers who were trying to gain money for some of the 12 uh, kids who were purported to have developed autism from the MMR. Mm -hmm. So clearly not true. Clearly it's an important vaccine. And the other uh, important thing is it's not just an individual decision for parents, because there's a thing called herd immunity where those who are not vaccinated and can't be because they have immunocompromising disease, cancer, whatnot, are put at risk from the kids who are healthy and should have the vaccine but might develop illness and spread it. Measles is highly contagious. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's not only an individual mandate for parents to protect their children by following the CDC and ACIP guidelines for immunization, but a real ethical and moral public health issue for them to have their kids vaccinated so others are protected. Because there has been um, an outbreak in some states out west, in Washington, Oregon, California, right. where there has been an outbreak of these diseases, the measles, the mumps, because um, people are not getting vaccinated. I, and that causes a, a problem that people haven't been used to dealing with because vaccinations have been so prevalent. Right. That's precisely correct. So. When we have our vaccination rates up above 95%, things are good, everyone's protected, everything is right with the world. When things start getting delayed and fall below that, we start seeing outbreaks. And as these outbreaks continue, kids will suffer and will, will develop serious illnesses and, and not do well. The other aspect about this is that the side effects from the vaccines themselves are, are few and far between. Um, very mild, maybe some slight fever, maybe some soreness at the injection site. But the risks of these diseases, which people haven't seen for many years, uh, far outweigh the risks of the slight uh, side effects that might ensue from the vaccination. Now, if, if parents want to follow the vaccination schedule, but they maybe want to um, space them out a little bit more. I know I, that happened with my daughter. Right. She was set to get three or four vaccinations. I right. said, you know what, let's do one this week, and then I'll come back in two weeks. Right. Just for the simple fact that I didn't want her to get three shots right. in one day, because yeah. it felt like that was a lot. And that is something that parents can do, that they have that option. 
They do. But that makes them we, feel more comfortable. The pediatricians will advise against this, but it, it is an option. And the bottom line is... they're still is, getting the vaccinations. Right. The bottom line is work with your pediatrician, talk to your pediatrician, make sure that everything's okay. There is a lot of misinformation out there, so uh, it's one thing to delay vaccinations because you don't want your kid to get multiple shots. But in fact, if you give the shots all at once, there's no more risk of side effect. The pain at the injection sites is similar. So, and, and the responses to the vaccines are completely identical to if they were separated. So basically, pediatricians will urge and advise parents to get all the vaccinations at once and not delay because there are some risks with delay, not a few weeks as you described, but if you delay over longer periods of time, that's a risky thing and there's really no reason to delay. Mm -hmm. But if you are concerned, definitely it's a good idea to have that discussion with your pediatrician. Absolutely. And that is the key element. Don't do anything on your own. Communicate. Right. Absolutely. Thanks for being with okay. us, Dr. Skolnick. We'll